In this section, we're going to continue with the law of sines, and we're going to look at what happens when we have triangles, when we saw, try to solve some triangles that have either no solution or sometimes two solutions using the law of sines. Let's go to the board and look at our first problem. Suppose A is 30 degrees, B is 40 feet, and side A is 10 feet. Let's try to solve this triangle. Well, I'm going to, again, just draw for reference a triangle. I'll label side uh, angle A, B, and C. So angle A is 30 degrees, side B is 40 feet, and side A is 10 feet. Now using the law of sines then, I could solve for, let's see, angle B pretty easily, right? Because I have angle B and the side opposite angle B. So using the law of sines, I have this. The sine of B is to 40 as the sine of 30 is to 10. So there I have, using my law of sines, I can solve for sine B. Now, this is the first time we've solved for an angle using the law of sines. Multiply both sides of this equation by 40, and I have 40 sine 30 degrees divided by 10. Now, I'll work this out on a calculator isn't too hard to do. Sine 30 is 1 half times 40 is 20 divided by 10 is 2. So I end up with this. Sine B is equal to 2. Well, the sine of any angle is always between negative 1 and positive 1. It can't possibly be 2. So this is impossible. Meaning that there is no triangle that fits this description. That is, we cannot draw a triangle in which A is 30 degrees, B is 40 feet, and A is 10 feet. Now, if we look at our little diagram here that we started with and redraw it a little more accurately, if I make angle A 30 degrees, let's say approximately 30 degrees, and then side A is 40, side C is 10. So side C would look like this. This is A. This would be angle B once it was filled in, and that is angle C. Then side A is 10. There's just not enough to side A, no matter where I swing it around here, for it to reach down and touch this baseline right here. So there just simply is no triangle that fits this description. Um, and if you notice, the, uh, as far as the, the chorus, what this would correspond to in geometry, this would be that situation where we had side, side, angle in geometry. And you know that was not one of the congruence theorems for geometry. So when we have that situation where we're given two sides, and, the, and an angle that's not included between them, that situation is what's called the ambiguous case in trigonometry. We must use the law of sines just like we did right here, but in some cases what we'll find is that there's no triangle that fits that description. In other cases, we'll find that there's exactly one triangle that fits that description, and in other cases, we'll find that there's two triangles that fit that description, depending on how long this side is compared to this side and this angle right here. So let's go now and work our second problem and see what it looks like. So I have A equals 38, B is equal to, whoops, angle A is 38 degrees, side A is 41 feet, and side B is 54 feet. Let's draw a diagram real quick here, see what we can get from them. There's angle A, angle B, and angle C. A is 38 degrees. Okay, side A is 41 feet, and side B is 54 feet. Now let's see what we can get for angle B, angle C, and the other side, C, right here. So let's see, there's only one thing to solve for first, and that would be angle B. So if I'm going to solve for angle B first, then I'm going to say this. The sine of B is to 54 as the sine of 38 is to 41. Multiply both sides by 54, and I end up with sine B is equal to 54 sine 38 all divided by 41. Now I work that out, and what I get is sine B is equal to 0 
So I get sine b is equal to 0 0.8109. Now on my calculator, if I press my inverse sine button when this is showing, I'll get b. This implies that b will be equal to, and I work this one out, and let's see, 54 degrees. So I get b is equal to 54 degrees. But remember that sine b is positive in quadrant 1 and also in quadrant 2. So there could be another angle in quadrant 2 for which this is the reference angle. So let's just look in quadrant 2 for a second and say, or, and I'm going to call this b prime, could be 180 degrees minus 54 degrees, which comes out to be 126 degrees. So there's my B prime angle, 126 degrees. Now, does that 126 degrees conflict with anything we know about this triangle? I have one angle given to me as 38 degrees. I now have found a second angle that's either 54 degrees or 126. If it's 126, 126 plus 38 is still less than 180, so this is a possibility. So what has happened is this. I have this triangle. Here's my angle A, which is 38 degrees. And here's this side, which is 54. And then this side is 41. And it can be either 41 right here, and this is 126 degrees, or it could be 41, whoops, take that back. It could be 41 like this down here, and this is 54 degrees. Or I could swing this side 41 over here, and this angle right here now is 126 degrees. So I have two possible triangles that both fit this description. I haven't changed any of my given information. That's still 38, that's 54, and that's 41. So in this case, there's two triangles that fit this description. This triangle right here, and I'll call this A, B, C, and then this, this long side right here, this will be side C, or this triangle right here, and I'll call this triangle A, B prime, that's this angle, and then this angle right here will be angle C prime. So next let's find angle C. Angle C will be 180 degrees minus 54 degrees plus the 38 degrees that I was already given, 38 degrees. So that comes out to be angle C, turns out to be in this case 88 degrees. Okay, so I have that angle C. So I have um, angle B. Now I found angle C. The only thing left to solve for is side C, and I would use this ratio. C is to the sine of angle C, which is 88 degrees, as, um, what's my other one, B, 54, is to the sine of, uh, what was angle B? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let's see, sine, yeah, 54. That's yeah, strange. So the side's 54 and the angle's 54. Confuse me for a second. If I solve this, I'll end up with side C, which comes out to be, uh, I don't know, so I'm going to stop right there with this. This is how we would find side C. But back to my original diagram now, I've got 88 degrees. That's this angle C right here. This angle C is 88 degrees, and when I find side C, that's going to be this length right here. Now I have to go over here too, since I found angle B prime, I have to go back and find angle C prime also. Now C prime is going to be 180 degrees minus B prime, which is 126, plus the angle that I was given, 38 degrees. So now that comes out to be um, 16 degrees, very small angle. And that's this little angle right here, 16 degrees is C prime. So C prime comes out to be 16 degrees. Now when I want to find side C prime, little c prime, little c prime is to the sine of 16 degrees as 54, that's the length of side B, is to the sine of not B, but B prime, 126 degrees. So this equation right here will allow me to solve for 
side C prime, which will be this little side right here. So first, in this case, I solve for side C. That's this longer side C right here. Then in this case, I use B prime over here, and I'll solve for side C prime, which is this small one. So when I solve this triangle for all the missing parts, I actually end up with two triangles that fit the description given in the original problem right here. So what can happen when you have the law of sines in the ambiguous case here where you're given two sides and an angle that's not included between them? One of three things can happen. Either no triangle fits the description, or two triangles fit the description, like this right here, or in some cases just one triangle fits the description. Now what I want to do next is go uh, and work a couple of word problems. Let's take a look at those. Uh, problem number three, a plane is headed due east with an airspeed of 340 miles per hour. Its true course, however, is 98 degrees from due north, and the wind currents are a constant 55 miles an hour. What are the possibilities for the ground speed? Well, I'm going to set up my little north-south-west-east system here. Suppose that this is due north, and then this is east in that direction. Now, the plane is flying with an airspeed of 340 miles per hour, and it's headed due east. So the plane is flying due east, that is this direction, at 340 miles per hour. Now the true course, however, is at 98 degrees from due north. So the true course of the plane is in this direction, where this is 98 degrees, so this must be 8 degrees. The wind currents are a constant 55 miles an hour, so that's going to be this right here, this 55 miles per hour. What are the possibilities for the ground speed of the plane? That's going to be x. So when we look at this diagram, this, the plane is headed, pointed in the direction due east and flying through the air at 340 miles per hour. However, its actual true course is at 98 degrees down from due north in this direction. The wind currents are 55 miles per hour, so I want to know what, what are the possibilities for the ground speed, and that's the length of this vector right here, for the, what are the possibilities for that for this situation. So let's see what I have. I have this angle, 8 degrees, and I have this side that's opposite it. I have this side right here, but I don't have the angle that's opposite it, so I'm going to put, draw this in and call this angle alpha, and this is what I have. The sine of angle alpha is to the side opposite, 340, as the sine of 8 degrees is to the side opposite, which is 55. Now this will allow me to solve for sine alpha by multiplying both sides by 340 degrees. Sine, <laughs> by 340, not 340 degrees. So I get 340 sine 8 degrees, all divided by 55. And let's see, I've worked that out on the calculator. And what do we get? Let's see. 340 sine 8 degrees over 55. Sine alpha comes out to be uh, 0.8603. That tells me that alpha is 59 degrees. That's the inverse sine of 0 0.8603. Or alpha prime is 180 degrees minus 59 degrees. I have to try this possibility, which comes out to be 121 degrees. Now that doesn't conflict with anything that we have so far in the problem, because 121 degrees plus 8 degrees is not going to be more than 180 degrees. So here's alpha equal 59 degrees and another possibility, which I call alpha prime, of 121 degrees. So what's the situation? Well, the situation is this. Either the plane is flying at 340 mi the plane is flying at 340 miles per hour due east. If this angle right here is 59 degrees, then the wind currents are in this direction, and the plane has this ground speed. On the other hand, if alpha prime is 121 degrees, that means the wind currents are in this direction, and this is um, this angle alpha prime right here is 121 degrees, and then this is the ground speed of the plane. So there's two possibilities, depending on which value of alpha we use. Each of them leads to its own triangle, each of which will have either, one of which will have this for the ground speed, for the length of this side, and the other will have this for the ground speed, which is the length of this side. So there's two triangles to solve. I'm not going to go any farther than this with this problem. Um, you can continue from here and solve for x and x prime. Let's go on to our next problem. 
It says, after a windstorm, a farmer notices his 32-foot windmill may be leaning, but he's not sure. From a point on the ground 30 feet from the base of the windmill, he finds the angle of elevation to the top of the windmill is 48 degrees. Is the windmill leaning? If so, how much? Well, let's, um, let's draw a little diagram here. I'll put in the ground. Let's assume that his windmill is leaning a little bit, and the windmill is 32 feet high. Now, let's see, from a point on the ground 30 feet from the base, he finds that the angle of elevation to the top is 48 degrees. So let me draw this in at 48 degrees, and the distance is 30 feet. So let's see, what do I have here? I have this side and this angle. This angle is opposite this side. I have this side, but do I have this angle? No, and I don't have this angle right here. So my only choice then is to solve for this angle because it's opposite this side. So let me call this angle theta right here. And this is what I have. The sine of theta is to 30 as the sine of 48 degrees is to 32. Multiply both sides by 30 and I get sine theta is 30 sine 48 degrees all divided by 32. That tells me that sine theta is, and I worked this out on the calculator, 0 0.6967. So using the inverse sine uh, function on the calculator, I get theta is equal to, let's see, to the nearest degree, 44 degrees. Or let me say theta prime is 180 degrees minus 44 degrees, which comes out to be 180 minus 44 um, 136 degrees. So theta prime is 136 degrees, theta is 40 degrees. Now how about this 136 degrees right here? If I take this 136 degrees for theta, or theta prime, and add 48 to it, what do I get? I get 184 degrees. So I'll end up with a triangle in which the sum of the angles is 184 degrees, and that's impossible. So in this case, there's only one possibility for the triangle that results, and that's the one where we use theta equal 44 degrees. So we're going to disallow this situation right here and go to theta equal 44 degrees, and then we can solve for this angle right here and see whether or not the, um, the uh, windmill for the farmer is leaning. But I won't, I won't go to that next step. I'll leave that step up to you. I, d I did want to show you this problem, though, because this is one of the problems in which we use the law of sines, and the result is that only one triangle fits the description. So with the law of sines, you have three possibilities. Either you're going to get no triangle that fits the description, one triangle that fits the description of the information given, or two triangles could fit the description of the given information.